Last year, there were over 18,000 new cyber vulnerabilities identified across both the public and private sectors. In response, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, will direct federal agencies to address and patch weaknesses in their digital platforms. Retired Air Force Brigadier General Greg Tuhill is former Federal Chief Information Security Officer. He's currently Director of the CERT Division at the Software Engineering Institute. General, nice to see you again. It's good to see you as well. How quickly is the cyber threat landscape growing and changing? Well, we're continuing to see more and more uh, complexity being put into the cyber ecosystem as more and more organizations uh, digitize their environment. And, and it's more than just information technology. It's their operational technology, sensors, internet of things. So the attack surface continues to grow. And we're seeing more and more adversarial groups, and those could be nation state actors, uh, malicious uh, criminal groups, or just the, the curious that continue to scan and try to penetrate that cyber ecosystem. You know, 18,000 vulnerabilities is a lot. What is CISA doing to address vulnerabilities in civilian agencies? I think this is a really positive step forward in uh, producing this catalog that not only civilian agencies, but also uh, private sector entities and particularly critical infrastructure can reference as they are taking a look at better managing their risk. During my time at DHS, we did a annual, you know, here are the top 10 vulnerabilities that we're seeing uh, adversarial groups exploit. And we, we were directing uh, different departments and agencies to patch based upon those top 10 vulnerabilities that were being exploited. But now we here we have a, a, an entire catalog and I'm already seeing some companies that are downloading that catalog and associating it with known nation state actor and uh, cyber criminal group activity as they try to prioritize their actions to patch it and configure and harden their infrastructure. Well, the catalog that you mentioned it has just been released. It's got 291 vulnerabilities, and uh, CIS is directing agencies to fix them within two weeks. Is that doable? In some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. It really depends on the department and agency as well as their infrastructure status. Um, let's not forget that many of the departments and agencies already have patched and have properly configured based upon the threat environment and the availability of all these patches. But there are several uh, organizations that have not. And as you take a look at the scope and scale of the federal government, you know, we have hundreds of different departments, agencies, boards, bureaus, and other government agencies. Uh, so this is a widespread uh, message to all in government, but also a, a klaxon or an alarm bell for folks in critical infrastructure to pay attention to these vulnerabilities as well. And you had mentioned that you had initially, you know, when you were in government, put out the top 10. Why the shift? Why now put out all 291 or whatever, you know, that, that they have decided of those vulnerabilities? Why do it that way? Well, you know, in this case, I think it's a it's a calculated measure to uh, help out with the risk management. Um, and by prioritizing these uh, almost 300, uh, that's actually a, a good thing and making it actionable for the organizations out there. Now, I will also say, you know, in our role here at Carnegie Mellon and the Software Engineering Institute, you know, we, we've got a catalog uh, that is out there of millions of vulnerabilities. So having them go out and identify these uh, nearly 300 as top priorities, I think is helpful in culling through those millions upon millions of known vulnerabilities that are out there. And then further to characterize these as uh, known vulnerabilities that are being acted against by adversarial groups uh, puts a sense of urgency out there for those folks who are looking to manage their risk. Does CISA have enforcement authority? What if agencies don't prioritize it and don't get it done? That's a really good question. And when we were working with the Congress back in 2014 uh, and, and 2015 to kind of characterize what kind of authorities needed to be had, you know, we were using the Defense Department as a model with us. Uh, uh, the U.S. Cyber Command's ability to issue orders across the Department of Defense Enterprise. And we wanted to have something similar within the .gov. 
So as you take a look at the uh, Cybersecurity Act of 2015, uh, it does say that DHS has the authority to issue these binding operational directives. But I think it's uh, left to be seen as to what kind of consequences there are for uh, departments and agencies who do not adhere to the binding operational directive. Um, I, I think that's still uh, something that ought to be taken a look at. But I, I'm finding though, when we do a binding operational directive, the departments and agencies are very responsive. What support does DISA offer to the agencies? Well, DISA uh, provides some technical advice and counsel and, and also leverages uh, tools such as the relationships they have with uh, organizations like mine, uh, the CERT at Carnegie Mellon, as well as other federally funded research and development centers, uh, private companies and the like to all rally together to help solve a lot of these issues. All right. Well, General, thanks so much for joining us and sharing your perspective with us. Nice talking to you. Great to see you again. Thank you very much for having me today.